And with those words, I would like to once again thank you everyone for joining and welcome the participants and give the word to Marina and Laura. Thank you, Asmus. <laughs> so uh, welcome to our presentation. Um, I'm Marina Brunner and I present today with my colleague uh, Laura Eichbrecht um, the research findings of our EU project Inclusive um, with the name Stronger Together towards inclusive student engagement of non-traditional students in professional higher education. So uh, to talk about our structure, um, first of all, I want to introduce our team to you, then the Inclusive project our research focus and methodology, the research findings, uh, give you an outlook and show you our next steps because we have a lot planned for the future and then we have some time for discussion. So who are we? We are um, a group of uh, researchers from the Corporate State University um, Baden-Württemberg. Um, maybe to say, so we um, speak English in this presentation, but you can also ask questions in German. And um, we are working together with um, Ulf Daniel Elas um, in the area of education management and lifelong learning. And our focus are primarily on transformation of educational organizations and processes, teaching and learning and lifelong learning processes in a digitized world. And we also have um, different projects um, for the, uh, on the future of higher education on a national or European level. And you can find our findings, I see Laura already posted it on our Next Education website. There you have an overview of all our projects. To talk a little bit more about our projects, so um, uh, one basement of our uh, studies are the Next Skills studies conducted by Ulf Daniel Elas. You can also uh, download um, them on nextskills.org. And uh, based on this research, we started uh, a global future skill project. Laura will also tell you something about this later on, uh, or at least where you can find the information. And um, we, had two, we have two um, podcasts. One is Next Normal, we study at home, and the other is uh, Studium in Shutdown, wir studieren zu Hause. And these two podcasts uh, were developed during the corona pandemic to give us a student perspective, how it is to study at home and what will change. And we also have a talk about uh, this. So maybe you will also want to join that talk, but Laura will also tell you about this later. And we have various EU projects and um, pr also one project with regional funding. And this project today is one of our EU projects. Yeah, what uh, Marina announced also, hello to everybody, happy to be here at the University Future Festival. My name is Laura Eichbrecht and I'm also a member of the Next Education Research Team and a dear colleague of Marina and we are really excited to present to you the findings of our first inclusive report today. But as announced, you can see more of the team and of our research that we're doing. So just after this session today, we have another session, which will be about findings from our podcast sessions. Uh, we did some research on that and uh, some findings, uh, higher education from a student's point of view. Tomorrow, there will be a session on future skills, self-assessment. And also, as Marina announced, we are introducing our new project, the Global Future Skills Project, looking for exciting uh, future skills approaches from all over the world. So uh, happy to have you there at the Lightning Talk session. And uh, Ulf will be at the Meet the Authors session on Thursday to see you there. So I'll hand back to Marina, or we're actually handing back to all of you. <laughs> yeah, um, because we thought we should maybe make uh, our introduction a little bit interactive. So we have a question for you. Um, maybe uh, you can answer us, when have you not felt like an integrational part of student community, or when your studying time is a little bit far away, maybe you observed someone else not feeling part of it. And our question is, what was the reason for that? So what is the reason that someone don't feel like a part of a student community? And to answer that, we thought maybe you can uh, give us your answers in our Mentimeter. You can on the one side scan the code, the QR code, or you can follow the link that we uh, post in the chat. Laura, maybe, or I can also post it in the chat. 
or you go to menti.com and insert the code. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you a few seconds to think about like, uh, yeah, when you have not felt like an integral part of the student community and what were the reasons for it or uh, when you have observed somebody else not feeling like it and we will display the results in in a couple of moments give you a little time to think <laughs> okay i will already check if somebody has contributed okay so here we have the first answer which is not living on campus mm -hmm. Being a parent and studies elder students. Being a first semester student. Ethnicity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Online Lehre, digital teaching. Mm -hmm. So of course we have some coronavirus. Um, Influence here as well. Fernuni. Studienbriefe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's, I think that's also distant education, I think, where you get Studienbriefe. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, studying at the Fernuni. <laughs> so okay. you, you can feel free to uh, answer this uh, question also during the Maybe we can have a look at it later on. Uh, yes. So just like, oh, what? <laughs> oh exactly. okay, we get some movement. <laughs> yeah, leftist opinions. Okay, so politics might be a subject as well. Uh -huh. And uh, somebody being more critical on topics or chronic illness. So there's some topics that we will find also in our report. So thanks for contributing mm -hmm. and feel free to contribute more because we can maybe have a look at it later again. So um, back to you, Marina. Mm hmm Okay, so thank you for that. I think you got an idea of what we are talking about when we talk about student uh, communities. And this is what our project Inclusive is about. So first of all, what means inclusive? Um, inclusive means uh, inclusive student engagement of non-traditional students in professional higher education. So in the beginning, this is, um, first of all, a lot of words we maybe have to explain. So first of all, we want to explain professional higher education institutions. So our university, the Corporate State University of Baden-Württemberg, for example, is a professional higher education university. And um, professional higher education institutes focus more on um, authentical, practical experience. For example, we have a dual study model, uh, model where are turning theory and practice phases rotate. So the students are three months in university and then they work with their business partner um, three months outside of university so that they can integrate what they learned already in their practical working life. And student models like this attract a very diverse range of students. For, uh, one reason for this is you earn money besides studying. And this is really attracting for a lot of people who maybe cannot finance their studying by themselves. So um, professional higher education institutions have the, um, the, the big task to include these people. We t when we talk about these diverse students, we talk about non-traditional students. So students who will probably not or are the minority in uh, normal higher education institutions. And um, to for professional higher education to be as inclusive as possible, the non-traditional students need to be visible. So they must be seen and their needs must be heard. And the problem is that many of these needs are not represented anywhere. And one way for non-traditional students to be visible is to participate in student organizations. So student organizations represent the study, study body of institutions. And sometimes they're also called the voice of the students. So it's really important for this non-traditional students that they are a part of the student communities. So, and this is what uh, Inclusive is aiming for. So the pro Inclusive project intends to contribute to a more inclusive student environment by raising awareness for full student inclusion and providing professional higher educations and their student organizations with concrete ideas, tool and guidance on how to make student engagement fully exclusive. 
uh, inclusive. Sorry. <laughs> so um, to see, so we started this project uh, in January. So, and we did a lot of uh, different research steps. In the beginning, we identified the different types of non-traditional students. So about who are we talking at the moment? Um, then we identified the challenges and barriers. We identified um, best practices for inclusive student engagement. Um, we talked about the different dimensions. Um, we also collected the different perspectives. So we talked with um, students, we talked with students' councils, we talked with professors, with a very broad target group to get as many different perspectives as possible. And we also tried to uh, adapt some ideas from broader society. So who are we? We are eight different partners uh, in Europe. We have partners in Spain, Belgium, um, and Croatia and Malta and in Germany. And we have on the one side this professional higher education institutes like ourselves. And we have um, these international uh, organizations like the European Association of Institutions in Higher Education, Eurashi, or the European Student Union, ESU, to give us this broader um, student perspective and this international view. So now I want to give you some definitions uh, and some explanations of the terms we are using for our project. So first of all, student engagement. Student engagement is a very broad term, so it can be um, described as a process of uh, collaboration between higher education institutes and uh, students to shape decision-making structures, cultures in higher education. So as you can see, it's a co-creation process between the students and the institution. And on the right side, you can see that it has many different levels. So we have, for example, the European Student Union that um, operates on a really international level. And we also have student engagement on a course level or on a student level. Also, student engagement can be really broad. So we can have student engagement in teaching and learning. But we want to talk today about student engagement in student organizations. And student organizations are thematic or political associations of students who come together in groups outside of the lectures. So we want really not to talk about uh, student um, engagement in the classrooms. We want to talk about student engagement outside of the classroom. And when we talk about non-traditional students, we also have to talk about diversity because this is the big topic over this non-traditional students. And in the beginning, um, we discussed a lot, how do we want to describe non-traditional students? Because we didn't want to label them with one characteristic and say, this is all you are. And um, so we thought maybe we can make it a little bit more diverse. And we use this diversity wheel um, with the different diversity characteristics. On the one side, um, so we have four different dimensions. We have first the personality, so the way a person interacts. We have the internal dimension. Um, these are characteristics the individual cannot self-select, something like age, gender, or sexual orientation. So it's something you cannot change. Then we have the external dimensions. These are the results of life events and decisions made by your or by your parents, for example, your location um, or your religion. And then we have this organizational dimension um, that includes elements that are uh, dependent on the position you have in the institution, for example, your field of study or your duration of studies. So um, with this different diversity characteristics, we try to map our non-traditional students and don't talk about um, them at all, but talk about the characteristics and the barriers that come with different combinations of characteristics. So non-traditional students are a very broad term. We found many different um, definitions, but we found one that is kind of inclusive um, and this is um, the three different group underrepresented students, disadvantaged students and vulnerable students. Um, I want to start at the top. So the underrepresented students um, are students that are underrepresented in relation to different characteristics, um, for example, gender. And they are really um, context dependent. So you can be uh, underrepresented in some contexts, for example, as a female gender in um, an ICT class, where most of the other students are male gender, um, but as a male 
gender, you can also be underrepresented, for example, in education management, where there are more um, people with uh, female gender. And then we have the disadvantaged students. These are students who face specific challenges because of their characteristics. For example, students with disabilities or financial problems or mental health issues. And um, these are sometimes also temporal issues. So you can be, um, for example, mental health during Corona, we had a in strong increase in mental health issues um, for some students. And for them, they became disadvantaged students in the time. In our point of view, they became non-traditional students. And then we have the vulnerable students, and they um, also face specific challenges. But in addition, they also need protection because they are not always able to um, ensure their own well-being. For example, students who are on risk of discrimination. So with this in mind, we created our own definition um, and we said in the inclusive project context, every student who does not feel like the integration part of, this, of um, the student and institutional community and or who due to their specific circumstances does not have the opportunity to get involved in student engagement during their studies as a non-traditional student, even if only to a small extent. And now Laura will show you our research questions. Exactly. So from this and from also from the aim of our inclusive project, we derived the questions of what are the characteristics of non-traditional students in professional higher education? But uh, most importantly, what barriers and challenges do they face, particularly in the area of engagement within students' organizations, but also within other domains of higher education? And what good practices and strategies could help us to increase the student engagement of non-traditional students in professional higher education? So we conducted some research and um, I want to briefly show you how we did that. First of all, we did some desk research and uh, based on that, we did some qualitative expert service within the institutions in our project from Germany, Croatia, Belgium, Spain and Malta to detect like first hint of uh, challenges and barriers that non-traditional students might face. Based on that, we did some focus group research. So we did focus group in institutions of professional higher education, for example, at our own institution, but also at the uh, involved institutions in Malta, Spain, Belgium and Germany and all over. We had 28 experts that participated. And then we also had one international focus group, which was, was conducted by the European Students Union. And the members that um, of these focus groups were either uh, students with a non-traditional background or representative of a student organization. They could be uh, have a professional background as a student support staff, for example, counselors, or be an institutional leader. We then analyzed the findings and the material that we found and um, uh, clustered them to different diversity dimensions. And uh, we most importantly, we identified various barriers for non-traditional students. And uh, this we want to show you now briefly and uh, you can have a closer look at it in our report which is available online so um before we already collected some uh, in the mentimeter we collected some hints and um of course this is not complete or finished here because as we said like the the term non-traditional students it's kind of um, moving and it can really be context dependent so we could name uh, students with disabilities and migration background mature students so a bit older than um, the average student um, as marina said um, for example female students in a very male dominated field of studies and uh, gender identity and sexual orientation but in the external di dimension we have uh, we might have the socioeconomic background of the parental home and caretaking responsibilities who might have the international background, students who have to work as well, um, students who have an alternative education path that don't come directly to university after their A-levels or re-entering students. And of, uh, what we really want to stress here is that this all doesn't mean that uh, this makes you non-traditional students, but uh, this might mean that uh, you, um, you might face more challenges and barriers for full um, inclusive student engagement. Um, but we, we really saw that we want to uh, focus on these, on the challenges and barriers, and work on these in order to, to really become inclusive. 
So what we found were that there are five main problems related to um, non-traditional students in relation to their student engagement, for example, in student organizations. A time problem, visibility problem, identification problem, image problem, and accessibility problem. So of course, if you, if you have to work in order to finance your studies, there might be less time to get engaged. Um, also, if you want to go abroad, for example, or do an internship, it might be harder for you to commit to long-term engagement. And there might be a fear of the workload, which is not compatible with your study workload. This is really true for our students at our institution because, because they have a very heavy workload already in their normal studies. There might be a visibility problem that uh, student engagement, student organizations, they're not really visible or it's not really clear what they are for and um, what they are changing for students and also about what students can do in order to get engaged with them. There might be an identification problem so that you cannot, uh, you do not find that you, the organization relates to your own challenges in everyday life or identity. Also on a broader level, the whole institution, uh, the way it represents itself and students, for example, on in PR materials, it might be very stereotyped and one dimensional, not very diverse. And also there might be um, a fear of not having the right skills to participate in a student organization. This is closely related to an image which might uh, a student organization might have. Um, like maybe a student organization might have the reputation of having a very heavy drinking culture, which is not for everybody. Also, there might be a selection and election process for specific roles, which might scare away some more of the uh, shyer students or they might perceive that there are political games being played in student organizations. And really last, but really not least, is of course the accessibility problem. So there might be language barriers um, or mobility barriers to access student organizations. The good news is that we also could identify some potentials and ideas to get rid of, or to start to get rid of these barriers and challenges for students because that's really our aim, that we not only recognize and find them, but also that we try to, to um, get rid of them. So to offer a broad range of different participation opportunities so that everybody can find something, participation to make visi uh, diversity more visible, to create some support system for different student needs and also for different engagement needs, to establish more contact points between student organizations and non-traditional students, to make more networking between the different levels of student organizations that we showed you before, to um, also really sens sensibilize and uh, inform professionalized teachers for different student needs to make teaching and learning also more inclusive, but also to uh, set up some guidelines and policies. And what we found very promising, and there's already some good examples for us, is, um, the time problem might be tackled by paying students for student organ organizations, student engagement, or to include these in the curricula and make them accepted as study relevant. So the next steps, this has only been the very first step of our inclusive project, and we will build upon that. We will try to detect more good and novel practices of inclusive student engagement and professional higher education, but of course also for other types of higher education. We will um, set up some strategies and guidelines for that and provide an online toolkit and training resources. And um, if you're interested in the report, it's already online on our website and you can also um, get it with a QR code. Marina will type in the link into our chat. And of course, the, you will get some more detailed information on our research. But also, we are really, really looking forward to get in touch with you. So feel free to send us an email and or to go on our website and contact us on the project. We also have other members of the project team who are really excited to talk to you. And um, now we have five minutes left for some questions and discussion. Um, some impulses might be, what are your experiences concerning inclusive student engagement? Uh, maybe we have forgotten about barriers and challenges students might face. And uh, maybe you have some good practices that you can share, which would be really interesting for us. So I will finish the screen share. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. I actually checked the Mentimeter again. Mm -hmm. And we have some more 
um, so like studying and a full-time job. Um, and we also have being a parent and studies, but I think we already had that before. And no online student groups. So that's also like an accessibility problem, I think. Do we have any questions? If you have questions, you can type them in the chat. I think also if you have comments, you can type them in the chat. Some of you already made comments by showing the thumbs up or something, but uh, questions and comments, very welcome. I think we have one, uh, uh, one comment. We got one comment in the beginning when I talked about uh, gender as a construct, of course, of the internal dimension. Of course, we can change um, gender. It's more about the biological gender you are born with in the beginning, and you cannot self-select when you are born. But of course, later on, um, gender is something you can change, which probably more... Uh, easy than other characteristics like age. You're muted, Laura. Sorry. <laughs> so we, we took that um, source from, from another source, but it's actually, thanks for the comment, because that's something um, to be discussed, I think. Yeah. And so, of course, something to keep in mind when you want to make an inclusive uh, project that you have an inclusive approach. <laughs> Any good practices? <laughs> I hope there are. You can also share some links if you have something. Um, we are always we have a database, uh, so we want to develop a database with uh, different best practices like guidelines or student organizations who are focused on including um, different non-traditional students and students with different characteristics. And uh, we are always happy to get uh, new ideas, best practices. So even afterwards, you can just send them to us per mail. What we also, what you can find in the report is like, we, we also put a Corona focus because that it was impossible not to include the subject because uh, we felt like the Corona situation and the digital teaching and learning has changed uh, the situation for some students. So some who might have had uh, challenges before might even have had uh, faced bigger challenges. And, um, but there's also some like for mobility um, issues, for example, there might be some advantages for some students as well. So uh, there's more information on that also in the report. Oh, wait, there's one maybe last comment there from Anne Sophie. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Thank um, you, Anne Sophie. You can send it to us, maybe. Yeah. If you find it. Uh, apart from that, uh, I think that will be the end of the session. So thank you very much to the speakers, to Marina, to Lara. Thank you, all the participants. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. Also, a reminder, there are more sessions later tonight and also tomorrow and on Thursday. If you are interested in them, feel free to check them out. So thank you and have a nice evening.